changer. You have unrestricted access to golf across Australia and the world. Thanks to Golf Australia, we're going inside the ropes. 10 to 8, we do have a big announcement, and that Adam Scott audio still gives me goosebumps every single time. Mark Hayes joins us from Golf Australia. Good morning to you, Hazy. G'day, half. Yeah, got the hair on the back of the neck standing up there a bit, so that's great. Nice little soundtrack under that, too, just by the way. Hall of Fame. That's a nice song. It's the Sammy Highland theme song, Hall of Fame. That's what it is. <laughs> Whitey, what is this special announcement, uh, gentlemen? Talk me through what's going on here at RSN 927. Well, from RSN 927's point of view, it um, gives me great. Pride, I think, would be the best way to describe it, to, to announce that a golf show is returning to the station. Uh, it's been a long time, um, but we are not only putting a golf show on RSN 927 on a Sunday morning, um, we are also having a new partnership with Golf Australia. This is going to be a golf show uh, with a difference because we're going to get incredible access to, to golfers and golf stories around the country and around the world. And uh, it is a true partnership with Golf Australia. And uh, they've had faith in us. Um, and uh, we're very, very excited about what's, uh, what's possible moving forward. Fantastic, Hazy. This is good news for golf. Good news, certainly good news for us, but good news for golf. Well, I hope it's good news for RSN, but it's definitely for us. And uh, the, the, one of the big conundrums for golf recently has been the lack of unity. And I think this will show that we're heading in the right direction, not only with Golf Australia, but also the states are coming on board with all this. And also, you know, we'll have PGA expertise and everything intermittently. And it's going to be great. We're going to be one united front and it's going to be a, perhaps the best way in Australia to uh, get your golfing news. And definitely, as Whitey says, to get inside the ropes and, and learn some of the secrets that are going on. And uh, hopefully we can uh, bring it to the masses and, and give it a greater appeal. So the program will be called Inside the Ropes. It'll right be up. on the radio 6 till 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning. But even probably more importantly, it is going to be podcast. Um, so that can be accessed through our website at RSN, but also through Golf Australia's website. Um, so there'll be uh, chats with leading players uh, both here and overseas, um, but also there'll be um, grassroots golf. So you'll get you know, things like pennant results and you'll get um, access to... We'll get mum's hole in one at the Junes. That's the sort of activity that we might do. Seven Wood, Hazy. Seven Wood at the wow. 17th of the Junes. That's fantastic. Unbelievable. <laughs> when was that? Last week. Wow. Has she come down yet? No, no, she's still high in the clouds. Never. Never coming down. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So Congratulations. Those sort of stories from grassroots golfers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, you know we're starting to plan out a couple of the, the episodes as they come up, and not this week, but the weekend, the week after, will be uh, a guy from Darwin Golf Club who's had a hole-in-one on a par four last weekend in club competition, that oh, sort of stuff. Nice. So maybe if your mum can sneak one out a little <laughs> bit further, we might grab her on. But uh, yeah, that sort of thing. And tomorrow we're going to have a guy called Marty Carmichael from the Castle Hill Golf Club in New South Wales. Uh, shot a lazy 58, 14 under par on the weekend. Oh, so thank you. we are going to go try and get right to the top. We'll do our best to get to, to Jason Day and those guys, but we've also got to keep an eye on what's important locally, which is you know obviously important for RSN, and that starts this week with uh, David Greenhill, the Irving Rosenwater times <laughs> every other golf nerd statistician who's ever been there. He's the man coming on with the Golf Victoria wrap of the pennant season that just concluded, and that, that'll be fantastic for all local golfers with an interest, and that's what we do. We're going to – a bit of everything and uh, hopefully a bit of in, in, an inside look at the politics of the game as well occasionally, not to be too boring, but uh, there's often a bit of a bit of a nugget that can be found there talking to the administrators that run the game. So, Mark, do you think there's been a bit of a gap in golf and, and that ability to tell all those wonderful stories across the, the range? Absolutely, Shrell. Um, for several reasons. One, the lack of coverage in mainstream media these days, and it's probably uh, Golf Victoria is probably leading the way in, in, in taking the game to different corners and using different avenues to do that. Uh, golf Australia is coming right on board, and we're doing the same thing. We've done um, Australian Open Radio. Half's been part of that the last couple of years. We've also um, seen the, the PGA Tour of Australasia take up PGA TV, and, and we have to fill in the void that mass media once had uh, mm. for golf. So if we're not telling our own stories, no one's going to know them, and I think that's the key factor that we're all taking into consideration here, and we're absolutely thrilled with RSN's contribution to, to golf in the last little while, especially since you guys have been going on The Breakfast Club. The stories, even this morning with Marcus Fraser, that's just fantastic, and it doesn't get told anywhere else. So, you know, it's not a reward situation, but it's very much a happy partnership because uh, you guys have obviously committed to the game, and that's what we love. And one of the great things, I think, about the next generation of Australian golfers on the 
on the professional tours is they've got some spunk and real personality. And I think one of the if there is a, a negative in golf in the last ten or twenty years, we don't we haven't had a lot of personality, and we haven't, or if we have, we haven't had access to it, and we haven't been able to know who these people are. And I think one of the great challenges in sport, regardless of how much it's got coverage in the mainstream media, is getting stories out there about the personalities that make up the best, you know, who who the best are. We don't see that in golf or haven't seen that in golf. Yeah, I wrote a story on the Golf Australia website yesterday, golf.org.au. Um, I was sort of looking back at a bit of Lou Richard's life and he's the one who brought football personalities to life, you know, from the mid-60s right through to when he hung up the microphone. He he gave footballers a life outside the, you know, the, the white mm. line. So mm. um, what we need to do is make golfers tell their stories, hopefully gain access as they get up through the ranks. And I hope we definitely have got those plans in place as this next wave comes through because there's some real little chirpy little gems yeah, out there. Good. But that's great for the game, isn't it? I reckon it's fantastic. And, and it's no, that's no slight on the current PGA Tour players. It's just, as we said before, Sherelle, They've had their vehicle of communication to the to the world ripped away through the you know the confines of yester, yesteryear's media. So they're not not as much newspaper coverage and and things like that have gone downhill. So we need to get them out there. But I actually think what's happening is there's been and my husband plays a lot of golf. He's a member at La Trobe, yeah. as you know. Um, and when I first met him, I used to go to that golf club and think, oh, I've got nothing to wear. People used to look at me and <laughs> as if to say, what are you doing here? And that was, well, you know, that was 15 years ago or whatever it was. But I feel like there's been, there has been a fundamental shift to allow those personalities perhaps to flourish a bit more. You know, I know at La Trobe, Brexit member, so that means automatically my daughter, who's 18 months old, and my son, who's four and a half, they're members. They'll be full members while Breck is until they're 18. Awesome. So there's, Gee, that's good, that's, yeah, that's good so Very there's good. a real, I feel like, I don't know if that club's different, but there seems to be just a real shift in the way golf is approaching, you know, how they're a- allowing people to express themselves almost. Yeah, I think that's a, 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 a great observation. Look, that's really commendable from La Trobe. And there's other clubs that are doing similar things um, just to make women more accessible, mm. you know, m- more um, safe and, and happy and not as confronted by the staid nature of golf traditionally. Uh, our swing fit programs are doing a great job with that. Uh, there's heaps of young kids coming through our my golf programs, and what the clubs need to do is to to pick up on some way of getting them in and giving them a bit of a cuddle mm. and making them take them through the junior ranks that they want to play when they're 25 and 30. Because clearly that's the problem with golf; it's got an aging membership. So you know, not that we dis, you know we we don't have any disrespect at all to the aging members in inverted commas, but yeah, we need to be able to f- to build up the membership base behind them. And if the clubs aren't doing that, then we've got a, we've got a problem. But that is the behavioural change or shift that needs to happen in golf because, you know, I've got young kids and um, one of them loves golf and you want to be able to take them to a pr- the practice putting green or take them down to the practice fairway at a golf club or even take them out on a course and not feel under pressure that, oh, what's this young kid doing here ruining my, my experience on the golf course because you want them playing young so they just it becomes part of their nature. And one of the things Golf Australia is doing, Whitey, is to try and look at all the facilities, not just golf clubs, traditional golf clubs, but you know driving ranges, putt-putt courses, foot golf, speed golf, all these sort of things and try to get as many different people into the game through different channels as possible. Uh, and and then give them the, a collective hug again from the golf community and say we want you as a member. And you don't have to play eighteen holes and be bored over five and a half rounds. We want you to come along and have a whack with your kids. We want you mm. to play nine hole competitions. Mm. We want you to play cross country formats. All the clubs are doing these different things now, and hopefully, this is the path through the future. Well, we're very excited about the partnership with Golf Australia here at RSN nine two seven. Inside the ropes is the name of the podcast. Six or seven Sunday mornings. On the, on the station and, of course, on the website as well, the Golf Australia website, every week. Every week. And uh, Mark Hayes is part of the on-air team. Which is great host, news. And it'll be hosted by Andy Mark. Oh, what? <laughs> well, that's outstanding. That's so outstanding. Andy Mark will be the main man for and the golf awesome. show. And I know we're running Inside out of time, but just on the end, end of the first one, there's the Golf Victoria element. It's really strong on the RSN you know, radio broadcast. So... 
Golf Victoria is going to have a great look at some of the things domestically and, uh, you know, from the pennant this week and ongoing things from GV too. So it's uh, it's a good uh, unison that we've got. Yeah, and we want people to get involved in it as Please. well. So, yeah. you know, emailing stories, emailing, you know, we, we want to go and road test golf clubs and things like that. Oh, yes, yes, we do. Oh, we want, okay, we now I get golf. it. We now so, we, I understand. <laughs> we so do, we oh, so do we Cheryl. <laughs> we so want to road <laughs> test these suckers. Who's got the best golf course? We want to know. <laughs> we want well, to know. We have to experience there the golf course today. Sell your course to us. We'll come. We'll come and play. It Who knew? Won't, won't be that hard to twist our arms. Uh, you've been paid the ultimate compliment off the SMS, um, Hazy. This guy, half sounds like Dean Lester. He does really? sound like a bit Dean. Yeah, now he's legendary around here. Yeah, I know. They're racing at Ballarat today. Have you got a tip for us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but, I'm sticking with Sammy Highland from what I heard before. Yes, that's right. Smart play by you, and uh, smart play by you with Golf Australia as well, getting involved with us here inside the rope, six or seven Sunday mornings. A brand new golf show on the program on the station, and we cannot wait. You can check your local guides for more details on the website.